off the beginning, disclaimer, I haven't actually broken the codes entirely yet. Uh, um, also, I will not be releasing code because there are probably going to be a lot of you really pissed off when I figure out how to get into your car and then tell everybody else how to do it. Um, <laughs> and I'm also not going to tell you which cars I did because, <laughs> because I don't want you breaking into my car. <laughs> All right, so uh, we asked Alex how much time you spent and what he did on that. So to get, just to give you an idea of what it takes to pull off this attack, this is the kind of stuff that I did before. I was a professional programmer, so I've done a lot of programming. Scripting is not a big deal for me. Um, but I had no oh, experience with RF at all. I literally started with this project doing research and figuring out what the fuck am I going to do when I download those uh, codes. Um, I do have some script analysis background. That's a mine, so I got a little bit of that. Um, and I did a little bit of research. I submitted the proposal to my team to work on this project in June of 2014. Okay, and we'll talk about what that looks like in a little bit, but the target is, in case anybody's unclear, you, have, you all have a key fob that unlocks your car. Well, <laughs> yeah. Some of you may not, uh, but most cars do. This is what we're attacking. We're going to simulate the code that's sent by that thing. Um, so, when I wrote my proposal, it was for a grand total of $26.45 because I'm cheap and I don't pay for shit by myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so all you need is a little cheap uh, uh, SDR receiver. We've seen these many times at SecKC. This thing, 22 bucks. Um, if you want to send the codes, uh, $3 for a transmitter that you can plug into an Arduino and write some code. Really cheap. Or you can take Alex's route, route is this one better? Hey! And uh, get a hack RF1. And it turns out on Friday of last week, my boss came in and handed this to me and said, Go forth and do good. <laughs> Mine's bigger. <laughs> so there's that. Um, but actually, in actuality, most of the stuff I did was with this little $20 device. Okay, so when we get into the details, well, uh, you can do most of it with that. Okay. The only thing about this is they tend to overheat, so if you need to capture a lot of data, you got to work around that and do it like 10 at a time or something. But um, software, we've seen these all before, but some of you don't go to SecKC, so SDR Sharp is a tuner that allows you to either of these devices find the frequency and record it. Uh, then the next part is a whole lot of custom code. I've spent probably four months off and on working on this project. So uh, lots and lots of time, spare time, company invested time. That's just what we do. Okay, so the beginning of this, signal analysis. We, had to, we have to figure out when we press the button, what's, what frequency is it sending on, and we need to actually capture that. That's what this is. The little colored line is what the signal looks like. That's tuned into that. I'll just record that to a wave file. Next part. Hey, we recorded something. It sounds funny. Actually, um, let's try this. Yeah, do that one. So that's what the wave file f sounds like when you press the button and you record it with a, one of these tuners, okay? So next part, Alex talked about doing all this decoding and figuring out what the hell all that data means. That's what this is. I wrote this script that basically grabs the frame data out of the wave file. We are only interested in the most significant bits of one channel of the each frame um, because 
Nobody needs stereo unlock codes. Uh, okay, so the next part is to actually convert that data into binary so that we can go into pulse width modulation. I had to identify a threshold. Now this is a matter of actually looking at the data, figuring out what the hell go, what the hell's going on, and going, okay, what threshold is it that defines what's a zero versus a one? So in right here, if the value, the hex value, uh, turned from the last screen, last slide, uh, this one, if that hex value was greater than 32, it gets converted to a one. Otherwise, it's a zero. Simple, binary. Uh, next thing after that, you will see a whole bunch of series of zeros and ones, and they happen at certain widths. This is called pulse width. So you'll send 21 ones, you'll send 19 zeros, 17 ones. That's basically your ones and zeros. It doesn't matter if it's actually a one or a zero, it's the number of times it occurs that defines it as a one or a zero. I had to also identify the threshold that defines what the pulse width defines a zero or one. So what I ended up with, if you see uh, line 3320, we have a 38. So what I did was set the threshold as 28. If it's above 28, we have a one. If it's below that, we have a zero. And you get a long string of binary that looks like that. And the zeros that happen all in front of that, up to that one over there, tell us, it tells the receiver to, to wake up and say, hey, I'm about to send you a code. We're going to unlock you. Listen to what I have to say. When you press, when you heard that audio, was that one press? Each blip that you heard was one press. Uh, there were three blips throughout that audio uh, file. In this case, we're looking at two of those, or in this case, it's just one. The next line, these are two separate codes. You can see the zeros, and then it ends up in a one, and then another long series of zeros, and it ends up in a one. Okay, and then you see all the binary that make up the code. Then all I did was convert that binary into hex values. So you end up with a 54 byte uh, signal for each of those key presses, okay? So what do we do from here? We've already done a shit ton of work. We capture a whole bunch of them and do the same thing, okay? Um, this file, you can see, this is just from line 80 to 95. I did my analysis on about 100 samples of just sitting there going, bleep, 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 and this is what we have. Um, so after I did that, I kind of said, well, it looks kind of random. Does it look random to you? I mean, yeah, there's, you know, prefix is probably a serial number, but the rest of it kind of looks random. But when you look at it a little bit closer, you see that actually some of these repeat most of the fucking signal the second time. Hmm. And then we have a check fit at the end that looks like it does something, so we'll have to crack that eventually. But uh, so, you know, and then some other patterns that I highlighted here. There's a lot more that I found when I started analyzing these signals. But, um, Let's just say that there's a lot there. So what I did, the actual cracking, I identified a bunch of patterns, I wrote a bunch of code that used more patterns, that, you know, doing uh, identified bigrams and quadgrams and all those kind of things that you do for um, stream cipher analysis, but this is a different sort of thing, so it sort of helped. But um, then I wrote a code that generates signals according to those patterns and compares them to the existing samples to see, you know, how close I was getting. So, here we go. Let's see what actually happened. Uh, can we get this? That's not going to work. For the VM, it's really, really, really short. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just try that. Okay, so um, I'm not releasing any code. It's not going to fit in that club. It's okay. Um, you can see right here, this is PHP code. I'm a PHP dork. You can 
blame me later, but uh, a lot of the other code that I wrote is in Python, so yay, Python! <laughs> yeah, uh, but for this part, I'm more comfortable with PHP, and it is honestly a lot more powerful, so I used it. Um, so you can see it just kind of pulls out of the sample codes, it trims them off for extra space because line breaks, and then uh, just go through and generate 10,000 codes. We have 100 samples, we're going to generate 10,000 codes, it takes about 60 seconds to run this, okay? I'm not gonna, well, okay, I'll show you. Here are some of the patterns that I found in some of the code that I'm going through. I just created tables and blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna give all this away. So, um... Fuck you! Yeah! <laughs> so, here, let's uh, cross our fingers just to show you that, um, Something samples. These are the codes that, that that script is reading. These are office codes that came out of a unnamed remote that um, <laughs> may or may not be for my car or somebody else's car who volunteered. <laughs> um, so we're gonna pray sometimes this most 99% this works. Hey, right there. Look, we have a code. We are six bytes off of generating a legitimate code to unlock this car. Wow. How many seconds did that take from when I hit that button? <laughs> okay, and it'll run, it'll take about a minute to do this. But the thing is, all the research I read up on this, you know, they have the replay attacks that came out at uh, Black Hat this year. They said, oh yeah, you just block the thing. And they're, they all use rolling codes. It's impossible to break that system. Well, here you go. Oh, look, more. Five bytes away. Six bytes away. Well, that one's a little off, but yeah. Okay, so this is what's running in a matter of 60 seconds. What would happen if I let this run for 10 minutes against your car? You know? So anyway, that's where we're at. Um, there you go, 57 seconds to run that entire thing. Okay? So. It actually works. Imagine that. Okay, so next for me, I'm going to keep attacking this thing. This is where I was two nights ago, and then I started actually working on the presentation to get here. <laughs> um, so the next step is to find somebody who actually knows what the fuck they're doing when it comes to cracking PRFs, and this thing will be broken by the end of the week, now that we've talked about it in public. Um, I'm going to try and find some hardware that's not actually attached to my to whoever's car I'm doing this to, <laughs> so that if there's any chance that there's some kind of brute force mitigation in there that it won't rip my car. Um, and then uh, that would suck. also yeah, collect more samples. Okay. Uh, and then the next, last thing, I'm done, but remote start is the next target. Okay, that's it! Woo!